Hi there. Before I get to today's project, I had four more people send me their stickers for my virtual wall. First one was Andreas Achleitner from Austria. Thank you for sending that and I'll have your YouTube channel listed down below the video with all the others. Second one was Josh Thomas. I'm pretty sure he's from the US, although he hasn't said so to me. And then there was Terry Hussieff, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right again. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced it. He's from Canada and not all that far from where I am at, as a matter of fact. And the fourth one, last but certainly not least, a man who's turning I really admire. He's not just a good turner, but a great teacher. And I've communicated with him enough to call him a good friend. Mike Walt from the UK sent me his sticker. Thank you, Mike. And all of them can be found down below the video if you want to check out their channels, and I suggest you do. So now, let's get on with today's project. Got a bit of a oddly shaped and fairly cracked up and ugly piece of wood here. I think it's Manitoba maple, judging by the red stains that are in here. Now, looks like somewhere in the past some idiot went and drew a circle here with a black felt tip marker, so that's not going to help anything. That was you, wasn't it? Okay, so I think I'm going to take this to the bandsaw, cut out a, as large a circle as I can from this, flatten this side because I want this to be the top of the bowl until I can put this faceplate on it, then take it to the lathe and see what turns out from this. Stick around, we'll have some fun. This is what's on the inside and it's just gorgeous. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to show up on the camera, but if I get this wet, it'll make some of that grain pop. And that's just spectacular, I love that. Now, I don't want to lose much of this, so I'm actually going to put the faceplate on the opposite side. This will be the top, and I'm hoping some of this will show up inside the bowl on the bottom. So I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw. This is where the face plate is going to be. So I'll cut off the majority of this and be back to turn this. Needless to say, this is a little out of balance. So I'm going to start by truing up the sides. I'm going to be turning at 1000 RPM and using my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. Now that this is close enough to round, I'm going to true up the bottom of this. I'll be turning at 2000 RPM now with the same 3 8 inch bowl gouge. Next thing I want to do is create a mortise, a recess in here, rather than using a tenon. I don't want to lose any of the height of this. So I'm going to find the center. And with that marked, I'll turn this speed way down to 250. And I'm going to use my dividers, which are set at one inch. I need a two inch mortise for my chuck to fit in there. So putting that on the center and then resting this leg on the tool rest, I can turn this on and mark the size of my mortise. Now I can clean that out. I will do that a little later. First I want to shape the sides of this. And I've set this back to 2000 RPM.
I can tell it's time to wax this. It's not sliding on there very well. It's amazing sometimes the difference it can make just adding some wax to the top of your tool rest. Let's see if this goes a little smoother. That did slide a lot more smoothly, and now, <laughs> time to sharpen up the gouge as well. After a few passes with a half round diamond file inside the flute, and then a few passes with the diamond card on the outside, this should be much sharper and ready to do some decent cutting. much better, still needs a little more work in here. Because of this inclusion, I was getting some bouncing before, so to countermand that, I just made sure I was pushing down much harder on the tool rest, and it straightened that out nicely. Now I just need to sand this. First I need to put the, re the recess in here. Now I'm going to use my parting tool to clean out this recess for the chuck. I'm turning at 1000 RPM. and the chuck will fit in there very nice. I can expand the jaws to hold that. First I'm going to clean this up a little bit, put a couple of rings in there for decoration, and then I'm going to drill a recess for my logo coin to be in there. Going to add a couple of rings for decoration. I'll sand this, then I'm going to drill the recess for my logo coin. I have some maple sawdust. Every once in a while when I'm sanding something, I'll keep some of the dust so that I can use it in the future. Now I have put some thin CA glue in these two gaps here, these two inclusions. This one has thin glue in it, and I'm going to add some sawdust and just grind it in there with my finger. The other one is quite a bit deeper, and I'm going to put some thick CA glue in there. I put the thin in just to get the fibers stiffened up a little bit. Now, see if I can keep that extra. I'll let that cure for a little bit and then come back to it. I'll 
I'll do the same with this one. Put some thick CA glue in here. And I'm going to put some thin CA glue over top of that just to make sure it penetrates that sawdust and wipe some more sawdust over top of it. I don't like to use a lot of sawdust, or pardon me, a lot of CA glue if I don't have to because it can stain the wood. So I'll let this cure for a little while and I'll be back to carry on with the sanding. This should be cured long enough. I'm just going to turn on the dust collector. I have the dust port sitting right here and I'll sand that away. I've started with 100 grit. These are filled pretty well. I think this one's going to be okay as well, but there's quite a bit built on there. So I'm going to scrape that a little bit, I believe, and then sand. I'll be back when I've got this ready. Shear scraping at 1000 RPM. Alright, that's got it down nicely. When I get this little bits of angel hair coming off of there, I know that it's shear scraping pretty well. So now I'm going to sand this off camera and I'll be back. This is my sanding sealer. I'll let that dry for a few minutes and then sand at 600 grit just to take off the nibs. Now I'm going to try two products I've never tried before. First one is Yorkshire Grit. I purchased this from Rob Summerlin at woodsleysummercraft.ca. He's the Canadian distributor, so if you want to try this and you're in Canada, he's the guy to get it from. And what I saw on his video was he was just working it in what I believe with what I believe was a paper towel. So I'm putting some on this paper towel and I'll just work it in all the way around and then just buff it off basically. And it's supposed to do the finishing of what the sanding is supposed to do. So well, we'll see how this works. Counting on you, Rob. Products he puts out are gorgeous. I'm going to put a link to his website down below the video if you want to take a look. I'm going to try buffing this at a thousand RPM first to see how this works. And I'm going to use a clean area on the paper towel. Try to take it all off, any residue that might be there. And I have to say that feels pretty darn nice. I'm going to buff a little more with the dry cloth just to make sure I get all the residue off I can. And I'll be right back for that second product. Well, I have to say, that feels absolutely gorgeous. 
Now, the next step, also from Rob, is Hampshire Sheen. I've seen other turners use this. It seems to do a beautiful job. So with another clean paper towel, I'll put some on here, rub it on, and then buff it in. All right, and now I'll buff it. I'm gonna to go to 2,000 RPM for this. <laughs> That's looking pretty darn nice. What beautiful grain in here. I just love beautiful grain in wood. Well, what the heck. Let's try step number three. This is the Hampshire Sheen Karna Crystalline Wax Stick. Now it says to apply it while it's running fast. So I'm gonna keep it running at 2000 to put this on just with the friction. And then I'm going to use another clean paper towel to rub this in. And to buff that, I'm going to turn the speed up to 3,000 RPM. All right, 3,000 RPM. I want the heat, the friction to soften this wax up let it smoothly coat it. Oh, and I certainly don't see anything wrong with that. That's a beautiful finish. All right, last thing I want to do before I reverse this is just to drill my recess here for the logo coin. Turning this at 250 RPM. I often see people turning their wood at 1000 RPM or more and I just don't believe in overheating the bit. So I like to keep it going slow when I'm doing it. Now I'll just set my logo coin in there and the outside is finished. All right, logo coin is in there. And before I put the finish on, I should have done my pyrography around the outside of the coin to sign and date this. But I forgot about it, so now I'm gonna find out just how well it'll work with the finish already on there. And considering that my handwriting is at the best of times terrible, I think that's all right. All right, I have it reversed now. The recess I'm using is only 3 30 seconds of an inch, so it's not holding by a lot, but that should be enough. I'm going to be turning this at 2000 RPM using my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. After doing a little bit of turning, I like to double check that these are tight. In case a little vibration loosens them up, they seem to be good.
The ends of these screws were pretty close to the wall. You can see the holes in there still. Getting to be a little too far off the tool rest reaching in there. Alright, I have said before that I'm not a big fan of scrapers, and I'm not. But there are places for them, and one of them is when you get in here and I don't have the proper angle, I'm going to end up with the shaft hitting the side, the corner here, and possibly breaking it. So now I'm going to go with a round scraper to do this part. Get it a little deeper and bring it around onto the wall. A little bit of roughness right here, so I want to feather this out, bring it right back to about here, try to smooth that out. It's a little thin, so I don't want to get too carried away with it though. As I'm doing this, I'm looking straight along the wall on the outside and trying to go parallel with that. It's feeling pretty good. I don't like to get 
the bottom of the bowl too thin. I want it to be bottom heavy so it will sit there. If it gets knocked at all, I don't want it always tipping over. I think I've got that as far as I want to go. I'm going to sand this now and I'll be back when that is finished. I'm going to do the same kind of finishing in the inside and around the rim as I did on the outside. But you don't need to see it twice, I'm sure. So I'll be back when that's finished. That large crack that was on the outside goes right through. It's a fairly good sized gap was in here. So I have filled that with sawdust and CA glue again. And now I need to take my scraper and clean that up again. I'm sure you were able to hear that every time it hit. Yeah, that did a nice job. It's filled up well. I'm just going to finish sanding this now, put on the finish, and I'll be back. Well, that finished it, and I'm quite pleased with it. Feels very nice and smooth. Got a nice little glow to it without being a little bit too glossy. So, I want to know what you think about one other thing. Glenn asked me to do a little more close-up on my cutting when I'm using the gouge and also to not use so much speeded up video. So I've done a lot less of that on this video and I'm wondering do you like that better or do you like me to speed it up more so that the video is not so long? This wasn't a real long project to begin with but uh, still it could have been shorter if I'd sped up the video so please feel free to give me your opinion on that. Well, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed before and want to, please do. Also, click the like button and share if you prefer to do that. I hope you'll come back next time. In the meantime, have fun in your shop and be safe. Thanks again. You take care now.